Okay, um, I'm going to try to say, um, describe here as an extension of uh, somewhat Mari showed. We've been collaborating for about 10 years and trying to get used NEARS to provide better measures of uh, brain health at the bedside, which is something that's desperately needed to screen for injury and often to optimize therapy while in the ICUs. Uh, this is the unit that Marty showed briefly. Um, I just wanted to point out that we operate very much like the ultrasound. We're model on that. So we put on plastic sleeves over the probes. So we come to the bedside and we're very much like ultrasound in the ICU. We put on the plastic sleeve. Takes a bit of setup time, maybe about 15 minutes setup time, about 20 minutes to gather the data, and then we're about done. So it's, again, very a model that's um, familiar to the ICU. So we've been gathering a lot of data um, trying to understand where the role of NEARS is. And standardly, most of the NEARS systems, what they do is they measure oxygen consumption, which we didn't think was a very good measure of um, brain health because it doesn't say anything about delivery or consumption. So we started very early on looking at blood volume and um, oxygen consumption by using the uh, frequency domain system that provides quantitative data. And what we found when we looked at uh, the neonatal ICU, we looked at uh, kids with proven brain injuries with diffusion abnormalities on MRIs, so acute evolving brain injuries, and compared them to health the, there was no difference in the O2 saturations, but a marked um, significant difference in oxygen consumption. And actually, compared to all other um, people in the NICU, these were babies that were unstable, so ventilated or on pressors. These are stable babies in the NICU that were uh, sort of the feeding grow type. There was no significant difference between these, but um, the ones with primary brain, brain injury had high oxygen consumption. And this is kind of a paradigm shift, because usually people think that babies don't have good vascular autoregulation, but what we found out was that the reason that they have high blood flow and brain injury is probably because of excitotoxic mechanisms and increased neural activity that drive up oxygen consumption. And we are looking at now what happens with cooling. Um, these red bars are the normals. The, the colored dots are the kids that are on cooling. So when we um, cool the kids, um, their O2s are sats. When they're injured, their O2 sats are high, so we can't distinguish um, with O2 sats. But what we do see as expected is when we cool their babies, the oxygen consumption comes down as we expect. So we're looking at whether um, NEARS can first screen at the bedside for who needs to be cooled. And then we have a monitor of what the cooling is supposed to do, which is to de decrease oxygen consumption um, with uh, hypothermia therapy. In the few exceptions that didn't um, decrease very well, there's often something else going on, like a metabolic disorder. So we think we can judge response well and hopefully determine wh who needs to go on to um, longer therapies and ideally expand the criteria to strokes and uh, global injuries that uh, don't present until after six hours, which is the current cutoff. Um, the other um, area we're working very closely with is um, the congenital heart disease group. So this is just uh, two different um, congenital heart diseases. The green is the normal, uh, the red is the abnormal. And I'll just focus on the um, oxygen consumption here, that we look at oxygen consumption preoperatively and we pick up um, very different measures in the kids with congenital heart disease because their brains have not developed normally. So they have a lower complement of neurons and synapses, we believe, and that's why the oxygen consumption at baseline is low. Then we're, we're just going to start in the next couple weeks monitoring them intraoperatively when they put the kids on um, bypass and uh, decrease, uh, cool them and um, put them under a short period of cardiac arrest. And then we monitor them postoperatively as well too to see if we can look at um, the brain function and see if there's any evidence of evolving injury. And what we do is we take the temperature and we predict what oxygen consumption should be based on that temperature and then look at differences of what we actually measure. So we're hoping that um, the differences in what we measure with um, uh, observed versus predicted will help us understand which um, kids are at risk for injury. And that's the group. And um, if anybody's interested in, um, we're trying to tag this into or correlate with MRI measures. We're trying to do this in larger patient populations to prove its effectiveness. So if anybody's interested in collaborating, we'd love to talk to you.